Hello and welcome to episode one of creating non-simulated clouds with Houdini. And in this short course, we will take a look at how we can manip manipulate any object we like, convert it to the VDB container of our volume data, and then make a fluffy cloud out of it. So this is gonna be, I think, a three-part video course. So in the first one, we will just talk real quick about um, how do you create, uh, how do you make basic operations with the volumes. So as you can see, I already have opened the Houdini and as per usual, press tab, start typing geometry. And now the thing is, so our geometry, usually we have been uh, dealing with polygons and whatnot, but for, for this particular example, we will be doing with, uh, I mean, uh, we will be dealing with volumetric. So volumetric is not particularly maybe geometry, so to speak, but it lives within the subs and within the geometry. And you can actually like move around and manipulate as if it was just simple polygons, particles or whatever, just geometry. So anyway, if that sounds a little bit confusing, let's just start doing things and hopefully it will be better and easier to get to grasp. So I think we start with a sphere. And for our example, I think we can do with the polygon. And so next up, I will just hover my mouse over the viewport, press the D key to get into the options. Um, I'll make the background dark and uh, I will disable the grid so we can um, actually see a little bit better what we are having. And second, uh, we will be using, uh, I mean, dealing with volumes inside of Houdini using the VDB and VDB stands for Volumetric Database, I think. Uh, you can read about it a little bit more on VDB openvdb.org. As you can see, um, it's uh, basically, uh, it's supported by everyone, also with Blender since uh, since this summer, I think. So this is really useful because we will be exporting our clouds into Blender in the chapter three of this course. Anyway, enough talking and we can start. Um, as you can see, if I just press right click here, for example, we can see there is a lot of um, there is a lot of VDB nodes that you can use, and um, we start VDB from polygons, shift enter, and as you can see, immediately something happens. However, uh, right now we are having the distance in surface, but what we want to deal with is density. So we actually will convert it to sort of like a fog, and you can see, um, well, it, it changed the how it looks dramatically, as you can see fog distance it's a bit different now the voxel size uh, it um, actually shows you how detailed the vdb resulting results of your volumetric conversion from your polygons will be so if i press the i key here uh, for the information you can see that we now have 4000 voxels 21 by 90 by 29 uh, 20, 21 i'm sorry um, so if we increase the voxel size it becomes even less defined but if we decrease well as the name suggests the resolution will jump however um, the voxel size they go into x y and z this is why the amount of voxels um, does not goes through square it actually goes through the cube uh, uh, multiplication so as you can see uh, just by having 63 by 63 by 63, it multiplies into 127,000 voxels, which is a lot of voxels. Um, and naturally, if you like 0 0.025, press I again, you can see already um, it's a quarter of a million voxels. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, maybe you don't have that many voxels, but you want to visualize them a little bit better. So you can uh, press the tab, start tapping V, V, I. So for volume uh, visualization, press shift enter and uh, immediately something gone wrong. But it's actually because the density field that we will be using to visualize is not defined here. However, here it is said that is density is called density. So that's logical. I don't know why it's not default. So, you know, anyway, we can just press density and it's back and uh, looking good, right? So now we can just use the density scale to scale the density up and down. And uh, if we just uh, multiply it by 10, you can see that our 
volume does really look really really coarse as you can see right here so volume visualization it, I would not actually recommend it for using for rendering because for rendering you should manipulate the density at the shader level however it's useful for just viewport manipulation all right so what can we do with this vdb we can convert to vdb from polygons and we can uh, convert vdb to polygons so we'll do just that vdb c um, convert vdb shift enter and we can just convert them to polygons however um, they will disappear because it better is is usually better working with surface however we can work around that by enabling the fog vdb and uh, creating the iso value a little bit a little bit to the right increasing the iso value now uh, if you don't feel interior it might again look kind of weird this looks a little bit better and as you can see we are getting perfect quads by the way now uh, if you might have already um, guessed that decreasing the voxel size will increase the resolution of the resulting polygons so that can be really useful and on top of that for example uh, let's work with the with the um, with the box we convert box vdb um vdb from polygons enable this um, again we are dealing with distance let's deal with density a little bit decrease the voxel size and then we can vdb of uh, convert convert vdb to polygons now actually let's work with surface uh, for this example because um, i just want to showcase you how to use the vdb smooth vdb smooth okay so uh, if we decrease the resolution of the voxels a little bit more and we use the vdb smooth as you can see we are uh, we start from perfectly sharp box of any resolution you want then we get it to vdb then we smooth the vdb and we convert it back to the polygons and by the way we can then do the attribute smooth attribute where is it smooth uh, and again this as you can see it relaxes at, relaxes the positions a little bit so that can be uh, really useful if you are working with some kind of tricky geometry and you want to convert it and although now there are people that showcase that you can kind of use it to to work with even with the hot surface i would not actually recommend doing this and the reason for that actually i can showcase it if we create a tube and we do the tube into polygon and we cap it and by the way you have to you have to have vdb um, from polygons uh, you have to have it's capped you have to have watertight geometry otherwise if we don't have it it will assume that it is infinitely infinitely thin geometry and it will not evaluate correctly so that will not work basically what i'm trying to say so uh you better have the watertight geometry to start working with it. so let's see 0 0.3 should be good um so if I make the height a little bit more, and then I uh, VDB convert, as we learned before, and we convert it back to polygons, uh, this is looking, you know, reasonably reasonably fine. However, if I transform the two before we make it into VDBs, because VDBs are actually like cubes, it's um, voxels, volumetric pixels, whatever you want to call it. Let's let's just for the sake of this explanation, let's call it them little cubes uh, that form your geometry so they go x y and z and they go in a very orderly fashion if you start rotating your geometry and converting it to vdb you might uh, get into the problematic situation uh, where you will be having these type of problems with your geometry so this will not be fantastic uh, for your hot surface especially if you want to bake some normals from high poly to low poly i've seen people doing this uh, people have been asking me about this uh, there are better ways of doing this and 
this is definitely not what you would call, I don't know, great production ready solution. Some people do this, it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's useful. You know what I'm saying, right? Anyway, so uh, keep that in mind. Now, next up, I wanna showcase, let's press L. So we have everything, you know, ordered. Uh, let's see how we can have a, have a box, have a sphere. Uh, convert them both to VDBs. Let me just Alt left click, drag. Again, Alt left click, drag. This goes here, this goes there. As you can see, we now have VDB from here, VDB from there. Now let's actually have the density. Here we have density, here we have density. Okay, fantastic. Now VDB combine, as you might have already guessed, uh, what it will do is it will do the Boolean a boolean operation with our vdbs what is it polygon okay now it working now it's working fine uh, okay so vdb combine now i have to transform before doing the combine and if we move it about in the round whoops uh, it should be working fine oh my bad uh, actually we have to copy a copy b and uh, in our case we have to add so it kind of like, you know, becomes one geometry. So if we want to combine the two density data, we just use the VDB combine and press the operation add. However, if we are working with the distance, for example, I enable this and here as well, I enable this. Uh, what we should actually be doing is the SDF union or maybe SDF intersection which will result in our sphere intersecting with our box and of course as the difference which is basically negating the results of our sphere to our box and when they then convert vdb c um, convert vdb to polygons back you can see that we actually have Again, watertight geometry with perfect, uh, perfect quads as a resulting geometry. If we increase the frequency a little bit here, so it kind of looks a little bit better. And then we do this smooth, whoops. We do this smooth. It should be looking much better. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we went about how to, you know, use the VDBs, how to visualize the VDBs. And uh, in the next section, I think uh, we will be starting to talk about how to use volumetric fobs to manipulate our volume data, just as we were manipulating it with geometry fobs. But in our case, we will be basically working with volumes. And we will learn a little bit how to operate with the fobs with volumes and how to actually create uh, non-stimulated clouds using just VOPs. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to see more. And if you have comment suggestions, don't hesitate to leave the comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.